Hey friends, welcome back to Putting Up With The Pom Poms. We are a mother and daughter YouTube channel where we showcase and discuss everything about our natural hair, down to the way we style and care, as well as giving you hairstyle inspiration that is quick and easy to achieve with minimum effort. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button located right below this video. Let's get into today's video. My protective style for this month, I decided to do some faux locks, but I wanted to do a tri-color mix and I'm going to crochet a majority of it and just do sin single individuals around my perimeter. So here I am with my hair stretched out. I did not use any heat. I didn't want to skip the heat this month. So I put my hair into six plaits and I kept it like that for probably about a week. This kind of gave my hair a break as well as prepare my scalp for a protective style. I will be doing a lot of tension with the braids and the locks so this is just like my break away from the tension because I know once I put in a brand new protective style I will be having a tender scalp for at least the next week so I'm just taking my tangle teaser and brushing my hair out and as you can see the growth has been amazing this year I was a baldy babe for the past two years and I've been allowing my hair to grow out this is like I believe my second year of growth and I'm just so proud of myself. I've been very consistent with my hair routine and making sure that I listen to my scalp as well as, well as taking care of my scalp and my hair. So starting out with the foundation for my crochet braids, I know I'm going to corn roll the center and leave the perimeter out for my singles. So right here, I'm just pretty much parting the hair that I know is gonna be my single and I'm going around the entire perimeter of my head, the front, the sides, and the back. So I'm flat twisting it so it can stay out of my way so that I can kind of like work on making sure all my parts are straight, using my mirror, is definitely my best friend but I recently saw this hack a girlfriend at work had showed me a hack where you can FaceTime yourself to see the back of your head so that you can part it better I don't know if y'all seen that tutorial but she sent it to me and I was quite amazed at it I know that she said that she tried it out and she loved it so I just cannot wait to see if it is a new way for me to style my hair especially since I am someone who likes to braid my hair very frequently by myself I do a lot of DIYs here so here I am with the perimeter completely out and I just want y'all to see that it's not very much it's literally one single row going across the perimeter so now I'm going to start working on my corn rolls that are going to be in the center and this is going to be my foundation braids for the crochet braids to be able to crochet through so I don't get hung up on making sure these parts right here are straight I usually try to make that concern be about my perimeter uh, these braids here I like if they a little crooked it's okay so my first braid I am going from the front to the back and then I'm going to come across all of that is going to be corn rolls together and I'm doing that one that's going across the back of my neck because that's going to be pretty much my barrier for my crochet braids to make sure you can't see the others like once you kind of see get your foundation down it can get a little bulky and I want to make sure that my crochet locks are going to secure and hide all of my foundation braids. Now, once I've finished this first braid, and again, this one started from the front going back and then coming across the back of my head, I'm then going to move over to the left side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I like to connect all of my cornrows together. So when I get to that very last one, I don't have 10 different strands of braids that I have to now sew down or crochet inner loop within one another. I don't have to worry about all, any of that. I only have that one that I have to, you know, make sure I secure cure it down so what I'm doing is creating my second corn roll and this one is just going straight back it's not going across like we did on the first braid so going straight back once I get about midway through I take the braid the first corn roll that we created that went across the back I'm going to pick that one up and intertwine it into this corn roll and I usually just add it in between the strands of hair that's that I hold with my index finger and my 
them and then just continue braiding as a normal very simple very easy and you're going to do this for every single corn roll so the next corn roll the same one that i'm doing straight back because all of these are going to be straight back nothing too difficult you don't have to worry about doing no funky parts or anything like that going straight back i'm going to wait until i'm about halfway through with this braid pick up that last braid that we just intertwined and add it in make sure you take your breaks because my shoulders be burning add it in and just continue braiding as normal so once we're done with all corn rolls all we have is that one braid that i have to then take my crochet needle and intertwine it so here i am completely done as you can see the perimeter still in its flat twist all of my corn rolls have been completely done and i have this one braid that i now need to tuck away and all i do is take my crochet needle and just crochet it under the back of those uh, corn rolls pulling it through make sure you don't do it too tight you don't want to have to experience any extra tension unnecessary tension and i just continue just crocheting it through those existing corn rolls until i can't cro crochet it no more and i usually don't have any problems with it coming out or poking out and then once it is time for me to uh, take out my crochet braids it's so easy for me to have to only worry about finding this one braid and it's usually crocheted somewhere in the middle of my head pull it out and keep it moving so once i'm done i'm now going to go in with some hair oil and this is by black seed baby and i have been in love with this oil y'all i've been using it for the past couple of months on myself and my girls it is just so damn soothing to my scalp i mean my scalp loves this stuff it has this nice herbal smell and if you read the ingredients on the bottle it has all of these hard hidden oils in there I had no issues with like dry and flaky scalp whenever i use this hair oil so now it's time to work on those perimeter braids i'm taking out the flat twist and i'm going to brush the, that hair out so i can now put my hair into individual braids so for me i want to go in with some medium sized ones now the hair around my perimeter is a lot thinner than like the back or the middle of my hair um so i did have to do these parts a little bit bigger because if i didn't i'll be plaiting up like two strands of hair and I, we, we don't need to have a lock hanging on to two strands of hair so especially around my ears those parts are a lot bigger than the ones that are around my widow speak now i decided to go in with like the fish scale parting look i don't know if that's called the half moon part i've seen some people call it a half moon part they look like fish scales like little, little mermaid fish scales to me so that's what i'm doing i didn't want to go in with the traditional like box braids for my locks um i just feel like this parting just looks better with faux locks rather than in box braids. Now that I have braided up all of the perimeter, and as you can see, they're in these nice little twig braids, and I did two strand twist them at the end. I'm prepping my hair. I'm going in with my faux lock that I purchased off of Amazon. I got the color number four, and like I mentioned earlier in the video, I want to do tri-color. So I purchased number four, 27, and then I had some 613 that was left over from a previous faux lock hairstyle that I did on my channel. Um, so I decided to use those because they was just sitting in the closet here I am adding in that first lock and as you can see I went back in to interlude my hair to make it a little bit shorter I didn't want to have to worry about having to pretty much wrap the entire lock trying to hide my hair so this kind of cuts my hair in half so I only have to worry about like making sure my hair is hidden for like the first what five six inches rather than going down the entire shaft of the lock so I'm using some Afro Spring Twist hair and this is also in the color number four. Make sure that you get the same color as the hair lock unless you do just want to have, you know, the duo color going on to each his own. Do you, boo? I did not use any nail glue whatsoever to secure it. I just palm rolled it and the Afro Swiss hair will not go anywhere. Just palm roll it, roll it and you are good to go. Now I'm going in again to show you guys how I added in 
in that faux lock and how I also went back and re-looped my hair just to make it a little bit shorter. And I'm doing that because I plan on wearing these in a bob style and I'll be showing you guys how I achieved that look at the end of this video once we've crocheted everything in. So now I'm finishing up my very last individual lock so we can now get into the crochet portion of this style which is pretty much my center. I love the way my individual locks turned out. They look nice and clean. They weren't too tight at the scalp. I didn't have to worry about them like sticking up and the reason why they stick up is probably because you're doing it a little too tight at your roots. Try to let up a little bit on the tension. Only wrap it maybe once or twice. Don't wrap it too heavily at the roots because that's when you get a lot of soreness and tenderness I'm tender headed already so I just that's why I don't like going to hair braiders I just know how sensitive I am about my hair and my scalp and they be gripping your thoughts and I just cannot handle it I would be in that chair in tears so for me I already know what my what to expect for my hair if something is too tight I have no problem going back and restyling it myself and that just comes with doing your own hair you kind of get that benefit of knowing where your tender spots are what to not do and what to do with your own hair and it also comes with time and patience of just learning your hair and your scalp as well so as I'm working on the crochet braid portion of my hairstyle, I make sure I start in the very front and around those perimeter braids first. That's where I want my locks to be the heaviest. Um, I wanna make sure that they conceal my foundation braids and there's not any big gaps. And this is also gonna help with me being able to do different styles. I did run into a dilemma with the colors and I'm gonna discuss that now with you guys. All right, y'all, so I, I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> I think I don't like the tri-color I tried to do, so I'm gonna take out the 613. Ow. I don't know how many times I will take out a hairstyle because I just don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. If it don't come out how I envisioned it, I will take it out in a heartbeat. The blonde, the blonde doesn't look bad. I feel like I want to focus it more in the back though. So I'm going to take these out and push those to the back and then do brown in the front. I don't know y'all. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure it out. A lot of my styles that I do, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. If it turn out good, great. If it don't, I tweak it until it does. So instead of the 613, I'm going to try the number 30. Um, I picked these up from my local beauty supply store because um, I didn't have time to wait for Amazon this time. But I do love the ones that I received from Amazon. Like they are very much the same, same legit locks. So, um, and they were cheaper. I had to spend more money going to the beauty supply store. Um, I'm focusing on the perimeter braid right now. So this first braid that we come to right here and this first braid right here. So I'm not gonna put any braids like down here, right here in this area. We're gonna leave that pretty much blank. And that's why we have that one cornrow going across because that's gonna be our perimeter braid. Everything that is above that perimeter braid, just right above it, we're not gonna put anything there. 
One, for me, putting locks there adds more tension to that area and it's already a little tender because of me having to braid the hairs connecting them to, braiding the hair connecting it to one another. So I don't like to add any more tension to that and adding more locks to that area will definitely do that. So I'm pretty much leave that area alone and allow that to just like be itself because this is going to cover it plus the individuals we did is going to cover it. Right. So taking out my front row right here. I already did one row of dark right here as you can see and I'm gonna do another row of dark. Just going right here across these braids. I'm gonna put the rest of this up. I insert my hook on how I want the lock to lay. So if I want the lock to lay more this way and I'm more of a side part girl. So I like to have a deep side part on my right side because my right side is my favorable side. So if I want the lock to lay this way, I'll make sure the crochet needle is going to come down and pull up this way. If I want it to lay this way, I'm going to go this way and make sure the crochet needle pulls this way. So for these rows, I want them to fall this way because again, I like my deep side part. So I'm gonna go in just like that and make sure my needle comes out from this side and pulls back the same way. And I mean, it'll still lay that way, but now you see that knot that we had in the lock. And to hide it, I just like to, for it to fall the way I had it coming in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and speed on through this. The crocheting part is literally the easiest part of this entire style, which is what I love the most about it. It doesn't take as long. So in total, this entire style took me five hours. That includes me braiding my hair and installing the individual locks as well as installing the crochet locks in the back. Five hours compared to eight to 10 hours if I'm doing it myself, two days, okay? Um, checking the back to make sure that I have the fullness that I want. If I miss a braid or if I see a big gap where my foundation braids are showing, I just go in and add some more, making sure that I'm not putting locks on top of each other because that definitely can happen and you'll have like a very bulky like root and center and you don't want that. You want this stuff below as much as possible but at the same time making sure that you are hiding those foundation braids so it can be a little tricky with crochet braids it's so easy if you do place a lock in the wrong spot or you need to uh, add more you can add more if it's in the wrong spot you can remove it and place it differently so it's never permanent and with throughout the style the older your braids get the more natural it can look so just you know don't get caught up too much on having to pack in all that hair and right here I am completely finished. I'm doing my simple little tie back just to keep the hair out of my face. You could definitely wear it like this, but again, I mentioned before that I wanted to wear this in a bob style. It is just too hot for all this hair, y'all. We are in the middle of July. August is right around the corner and I just know it's gonna be an even hotter month. So I plan on doing some lock knots and I'm gonna show you guys how I achieve that. I'm just checking to make sure that I have the fullest knot I want. All right, y'all, so this is the finished look I had did some lock knots and I'm gonna show you guys how I achieve my lock knots I had to watch like several tutorials to kind of like find my way of getting it because a lot of the lock knot tutorials they're doing them on their natural like knot locks and of course these are faux locks so I took two strands and I rope twisted them together. That requires me knowing which way the locks are twisted together. So if I turn this way on the, cause when you rope twist, you're twisting while twisting. If I turn this way, as you can see, it's unraveling my lock. And we don't, we don't want the lock to unravel. We want it to be nice and tight. So I have to twist this way. So this is how my locks are twisted together. And as you can see, there goes my twist, right? So once I twisted it to the length that I wanted it to, to fall, I then went in and put a knot, like I literally tied it. So just literally just loop it around and pull it through to create a knot and pull it tight. Um, once I have my knot, this lets me know, okay, this is my stopping guide for how, how long my lock knot is going to fall. I then uh, take the knot and I kind of like fold it upwards so that I know this is my stopping point as I'm twisting the rest of the lock up the shaft of the lock. And then once I get a little bit out of reach where my hand, cause I'm still holding this bottom piece, I then take this and push it down. 
So pushing it down is going to like kind of make it all jumble down at the end. But once you kind of like get your like rhythm, you'll realize, okay, I figured it out. I figured it out. Now this doesn't have to be super tight. Um, I just have a bad habit of doing hairstyles tight because I feel like if it ain't tight, it ain't done. So um, toxic trait from being a kid getting my hair done if my hair won't my scalp won't scream it i just felt like my hair won't done so once i get to the end i just come back down towards the knot push it down just a little bit further so there we have it right there then i'm gonna take a rubber band and like i said some ladies said that their stayed like they didn't have any issues they didn't have to secure theirs but for me no mine's were coming right undone so I rubber band it maybe two or three times and there you have it the older it gets like the more frizzier it gets so you don't end up seeing the rubber bands after a while um, I've had these in going on two weeks now it's almost hard for me to uh, take them out and move on to my next style but I'm just in love with this lock knock bob like yeah I'm in love with it I like the length on it is perfect it doesn't get in my way it's so yeah this is it I'm gonna do a quick a little 360 for you guys so y'all can see everything back up for you and I have been in love with them like they're literally just like off my back super super cute and then I love bobs so anything in a bob style it's always gonna have my favor. It's always gonna have my favor. So thank you guys for joining us on a, another tutorial here on our channel. We greatly appreciate having y'all. We will see y'all on another one. Be blessed and be safe.